My name is Justin, I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley. In this video, I'm going to continue that ID versus UX debate, why I personally switch from ID to UX, and how easy or difficult is it to pivot. everyone to start off by giving some context industrial design and user experience design they actually share very similar fundamentals where they vary is the output of the product physical versus digital my undergraduate degree was in industrial design from Georgia Tech designing physical products but I had made up my mind to pursue UX after my second year of college which led me down the path of getting UX design internships a UX slash media design master's degree and my full-time job in UX right now so today I'm sharing how I got here what gave me the thought of switching from ID to UX what helped form my decisions and overall how I make that pivot happen let's dive right in First, let's align with some definitions. The term UX actually includes a ton of things, a ton, from service design to strategy to even some tangible elements, which could get really complicated and overwhelming to cover all of them in this video. So let's put that aside. And I will make another video for that to further explain why I hate the term UX and why I don't want to call myself a UX designer. For the sake of simplicity, the UX I'm talking about in this video refers to digital products, software products. So UX design is designing mobile apps, websites, web apps, tablet apps, and other ones revolving around similar natures, which is also 95% of the jobs or products in Silicon Valley in the tech industry where I'm currently working. Now, let's go back to my first year ID program at Georgia Tech and see what happened there. Apparently, there's no first year ID classes to take if you're an ID major in 2012. So nothing really to talk about there. Except we did a lot of paper models, drawings, woodworking. So that's somewhat borderline ID. I know in 2016, they revamped the entire ID program. So there are some dedicated courses for freshman ID. So lucky for them, sucks for me. Okay, second year. Sophomore ID was where things actually happened. We did some real ID projects for the first semester. A cardboard chair, a screwdriver, and a parking kiosk. For the first two, they are very physical, very classic ID projects. I like them. One thing that I remember the most though was physical model making is very time consuming. Folding a million pieces of paper or sending 20 MDF models and two hours for each. The parking kiosk project was what changed everything. It was a team project, meaning we're gonna divide the workload, somebody's gonna do the physical kiosk design, and somebody's gonna handle the UI, the user interface for the kiosk. At that point in time, I had not done any sort of UI work, but I was very curious how that works. So I volunteered to do the UI side of the design. There's a lot of reading homework on human computer interaction, heuristic evaluation, prototyping UIs and such. On the top of that, I found more to read on usability testing, building minimum viable products, how to design UIs and etc. Along with the reading, the design was happening in parallel. I was using Adobe Illustrator, which I hate and I would not recommend for any UI work. Sorry Adobe. To start wireframing and designing the UI flow of the parking payment. After this project and other subsequent ID projects, I realized a few things. Number one, I can design so much faster in UI UX projects. I can see changes in the design for just a few clicks. I feel like I could accomplish a lot more just because I can work at a faster pace. Maybe because I play sports, but personally, I prefer to work fast to see changes happen quickly. Tweak a few things in five minutes, step back, take a look or just print it out. I had to say, I had a lot of fun going through that rapid iterative process in designing UI and UX. Number two, Exactly one semester ago, I took an intro to computer science class, which I thought I would absolutely hate because in high school, I never thought CS would be my thing because if I had to deal with ones and zeros all day, that's ridiculous and it's even traumatizing, I think. Since it's mandatory, fine, I would do it. But that has been one of the most life-changing events I've ever had. 
CS is in fact very practical and very ubiquitous. It helps create the world that I'm living in. Everything that has a circuit board can arguably to be said to have some CS or coding in it. When I was working on the UI for the parking kiosk, I was also taking another computer science course, Intro to Java, which makes CS even more relevant to my life because for homework, we needed to make some Java applications that worked and looked like Photoshop and some video games. Here are how things began to connect. As part of the parking kiosk project, we need to make an interactive prototype, meaning you need to have something that you can click through the flow of pay for parking in this case, instead of a static image. It was completely fine to just use Keynote or PowerPoint to make the prototype. But then one of my classmates was coding his design with Objective-C which was the language back then to make an iOS app. And of course, he made the real prototype, a real app that you can interact with, that you can tap through the entire process. And I was like, holy shit. you can really make your design come to life? As an app, I want to make one too. The rest of the semester was about iterating on a UI, learning Objective-C from scratch, and building an iOS app, an interactive prototype for my parking kiosk interface design, also from scratch. The whole process was actually really brutal because I had to spend a lot of time on it, like a lot of personal time to work on it. But it's very rewarding because I designed the entire interface from scratch and built a whole functional app for it. Seeing my design coming out on an iPad mini and having my friends and professors interacting with it just feels amazing. It's really hard to make a real functional ID prototype Especially, I want one that really well integrated with the form. Remember the screwdriver that I designed? It's just for show, it doesn't work. It won't turn. Three, later on for my first UX internship, a visual designer on my team used to be an industrial designer for IKEA in Sweden. But he ultimately left IKEA because he told me that the development cycle for hardware for physical products are just too long. Typically, two to three years from concept to store. If it all happened in one year, it's a miracle. Personally, I prefer to work at a faster pace to ship products sooner and eventually design more different products that I could put into the hands of my family and friends. Four, once I finally got to learn about 3D modeling, installing works. I realized I don't like the process of 3D modeling. I don't know if it was because SolidWorks actually sucks or my mind just not tuned to how 3D modeling works. I could eventually create 3D models for my school projects, but I wouldn't say I enjoyed the process. I felt like it was grilling me every second when I was modeling and I could spend the time better elsewhere. I picked up Rhino and Cinema 4D later. I would say they are better, they are better 3D modeling software. But still, I prefer not to do the modeling. At the same time, I do really enjoy looking at the rendering of a 3D model. But that begs a bigger question. If I cannot really enjoy the end-to-end -end process of ID, how could I possibly enjoy working as an industrial designer later in the future? Well, what do I enjoy then? I enjoy creating digital products, software, apps. I just feel way more free and liberated using Sketch, using After Effects, Framer to bring my ideas to life. Then the answer to what I need to do next is pretty obvious. Therefore, the rest of my time at Georgia Tech was just to keep finding UX resources to read on my own and learn as much as I could. I would convince my professor with a list of my rationales to let me design a mobile app. If not, then it would be an Internet of Things project, meaning there's a piece of hardware and there's some software and an app, which is not a bad compromise. I learned that designing UIs actually require a lot of graphic design and visual design skills, which was really my weakness back then and school didn't teach that. So I signed up for summer school at Parsons in New York City, which was also a life-changing experience. As I met more people, I found out the Human Computer Interaction Program at Georgia Tech was actually pretty solid. So I looked into that and eventually I decided to do a minor in computer science in HCI. Even today, I had to say the Georgia Tech HCI program is pretty good. Very informative and I learned a lot from those classes. The next thing is, you know, to work on thousands of iterations of my resume and portfolio so that I could get all those UX internships. After Georgia Tech, I figured I should do a master's in a subject space that I'm really interested in. So here we go, media design practices at Art Center, working on augmented reality, machine learning, and movement design. What came after grad school last year was interviewing with 23 different companies and going through 22 interviews in four weeks over the summer. And then finally I'm here, 
back to YouTube. If you are torn between ID and UX like me, or just even thinking about them, here are my final notes. Number one, do you have a preference on the physicality of the design? Will you feel disappointed if you cannot touch the product or feel the material, the texture, and the finish of the product that you help design? Number two, do you like slowly and meticulously tinkering during the design process? Like waiting for 10 hours for a 3D print, sending a model for two hours, or you like to work fast and create 10 iterations in a day? Number three, how many products do you want to design in your lifetime? And do you want those products to be able to be framed in a gallery on the spotlight? Or is it okay for your products to disappear under the screen once you lock the phone? Number four, do you enjoy the end-to-end -end process of industrial design, such as making physical models and creating 3D models, going into the wood shop, using a bandsaw, ripsaw, panel saw, making 10, 24 models? Number five, if you have not worked in both ID and UX, I would suggest you to go back to this question after you do both, because you need to get a feel for both. If you have, then generally speaking, do you lean on either type of the design, physical or digital? This is not a determining question. It's just to gauge if you have any slight preference. Even today, I still have to say I love physical products. I love the 3D aspect of it. Still not the 3D modeling part though, but I work on software design, which is totally okay. To find my perfect place, I try to find companies that have both the hardware and software component. So I get to work on software designs for hardware products. Truly amazing, isn't it? Number six, last note. What kind of design? This could even go beyond ID or UX, maybe even really niche motion design, for example. What kind of design work makes you happy, gives you energy, that you feel passionate about, that you can wake up in the morning and say, great, I'm gonna do this now. Or when you're walking down the street, you are like, oh, I've got an idea. Let me go home and make it. I used to think it would be such a shame to not be an industrial designer with a degree in industrial design. It turns out it's not. I'm glad that I pivoted and everything evolved and led me to where I am today. Talking to you on YouTube. Things don't always go according to plan. And they don't need to. Because things are always connected and they're always evolving. In the end, you'll be fine as long as you're working hard on meaningful things that you like. If you're not fine, that's not the end yet. Keep moving. With that said, thank you guys for watching. If you find this video useful, please destroy the like button for that awesome blue to show up. If you want to see more videos like this, also consider smash that subscribe button as well. Doing so will tremendously help the channel and motivate me to produce more high quality content down the road. Have fun following your passion and keep designing a better future. See you on the next video. Cheers!